The fire burned the building. It didn't burn us. A fire destroys a Yupik immersion school in Bethel. After less than a week, though, students are back in class. We, we had no uniforms, we had no shoes, headgear, medical kits, we didn't have anything. Thanks to the help of the community and businesses, a group of Bethel wrestlers did not have to face their biggest opponent alone. Sponsorship for Frontiers with Rhonda McBride is provided by Kupik Corporation and Spinard Builders Supply. Alaska, where there are old triumphs, but also new frontiers. With challenges as great as the state itself, but a belief the best is yet to come. Bringing you the faces, the places, and the spirit of the last frontier. This is Frontiers with Rhonda McBride. Welcome to Frontiers. In this program, we take you to the Kuskokwim River community of Bethel, where an early morning fire on November 3rd destroyed a historic building that housed the Kuskokwim Learning Academy and Alternative Boarding School, as well as the Ayapurin Lignachavik Yupik Immersion School, one of the state's shining stars of native language preservation. It's about 32 degrees in downtown Bethel. Winds coming from the south at five miles per hour. Hometown coming news from a station like no other. Iapron Yupik emergent students are returning to school today. Here, stories are told in two languages. Charles Enoch reports on the city's request for disaster relief to recover from the fire. Both this station and the school have done a lot to keep the Yupik language alive. I had to hold my tears back so I could keep taking pictures. Pictures Geraldine Brink put up on the station's website. I didn't like seeing the black smoke. Geraldine attended both the Yupik That's Immersion weird. School and the Learning Academy. It just means a lot to me. The snow may have softened the look of this scene, but the community is staying strong. Exactly one week after the fire, children are about to begin their second day of school, adjusting to new traffic patterns and a new location. Classes for the early grades are here in the district's main headquarters. They're rock stars in my book, and they're my heroes right now. In a so. matter of days, staffers and volunteers turn training space into classrooms. You know, we're going to do everything we can to make a positive out of it. Reprinted and, and all the Yupik materials, even boated down the Kuskokwim River to retrieve extra desks from neighboring villages. The school is that important to the region, as are its students. Many of them saw their school burned down, and so they're asking lots of questions, wondering what happened. The school's namesake, Lottie Ayaprin Jones, like many of the other staffers, wants to make everything seem as normal as possible. Paper. Yuktun, that means speak Yupik. Where is Askuk, she says. Lottie uses her students' Yupik names to teach them the alphabet. They go on to other words. What is this, she says. If the kids are bothered by their worn and shabby surroundings, they don't seem to show it. But I told the principal, I'm not going to sit them down and you know, go, go through, you know, this Western system of grieving. Uh-uh. Ayapran admits it hurts that the fire destroyed some rare items belonging to her mother, but if she were alive, she would tell her to move on. Life keeps going on, despite the hardships. Akapiaka, <laughs> which means I did it. And in just two days, the children have done something no one expected, shown a remarkable resilience. Ayaprin credits the school's Yupik values. Every day, the children say the Pledge of Allegiance and sing America in Yupik. They also repeat the Yuyurak by heart. 
Yuyhak means way of the human being, a Yupik code of honor. Um, is respect. It would take an hour or more to express everything these words encompass, but showing gratitude is one of the values. A week ago we had a fire and today we have school, you know, we're doing well. Today for their English lesson, their assignment to compose thank you notes. We are thankful for the money you have raised for our school. Perhaps what they're most grateful for the warm welcome from students and staff at the Gladys Jung School, who gave up their art and computer space to the students. And, uh, we're blessed to have four classrooms that are super close together. They also plastered the Iopran School's mascot all over the building to help them put the fire behind them. And still, it isn't easy. I stayed in my house and I could see the view of black and red flames dancing in the sky. I've been there since kindergarten, and I'm in sixth grade. <laughs> Back at the district office, kindergartners sing their favorite songs, including the Hokey Pokey in Yupik. <laughs> Iopran hasn't missed a beat, all day long. You know, the sound of that drum will never cease. She laughs at being called the matriarch or grandma of the school. So what does it mean to be the grandmother of the school? It means no matter how old you are, you can just keep, you know, moving. Buchi okay. Iopran says, which means be as you are and carry on. <laughs>
For the community of Bethel, the Ayoprin Liebnachovic School housed more than just a language program. It was a symbol of the region's Yupik cultural renaissance. Linguists say you can predict whether a language will live or die by the number of children who speak it. History has shown, once it slides, odds are it'll slip away. When the Bethel Yupik Immersion Program got off the ground 20 years ago, many in Bethel believed that the language was too far gone for it to succeed. But perhaps reports about the death of Yupik were premature. It's a total success story, and some of the success is immeasurable. As a state legislator and a parent, Mary Sattler has been a longtime supporter of the Bethel Immersion Program. The performance that the Ayapunit Nalvik School has been able to show speaks for itself. The school district says when immersion students graduate from the sixth grade and go on to a traditional high school, they often outperform their counterparts. You got straight A's. The Winkelmans have had two children in the Bethel Immersion Program. Their son, Alec, graduated from it last year. He sang and played the drum for us to share what he learned at Ayapurn. You can sing it to your children or anything when you grow up, and you can pass it on. What Alec likes best is that he can understand what his grandparents say when they talk with him. He says his understanding of Yupik has also enhanced his knowledge as a hunter. <laughs> On this night, Alec's mother, Adun, is comforting his sister, Catherine. <laughs> she is still grieving the loss of her school. And Adun is too. She once taught at Ayaprin. Today, she develops bilingual materials for the district. The fire burned the building. It didn't burn us. Still, the fire hit hard. I just can't separate um, myself from this, this school building because so much of, of who I am has been incorporated. For decades, Adun has worked to prove that Yupik could be revitalized and that it was worth saving. Looking at this page, because this is an original Yuchtun story. Originally told in Yupik by Adun's grandmother, Olinka Michael, and written down by her Aunt Lillian. And they come across a river. It's about a giant who takes his revenge on some noisy children. Because they're playing so loudly and not listening. The Yupik language, the culture, and its food. Yeah, we were in some years. They enrich the lives of the Winkelmans, especially for Adun's husband, Dan. Read that to me. An Athabascan from McGrath. His family has already lost their language. The school is um, a phenomenal school because, to me, it represents something that I didn't have the opportunity to go through. Dan says the very act of building a new home for the Ayoprin school will be important. Um. That means we have a living language, a living culture. For 20 years, Bethel has watched a small group of dedicated parents and teachers do what many said couldn't be done, bring language back from the brink. Bethel firefighters did their best to save the library at Ayakwin Lignahovic, which housed some of the first Yupik books and teaching materials ever created. We really made it my goal to make it the highest quality and the most color. Graphic artists like Joy Chance use those early materials to create new books, like this story about a boy who dreamed of seal hunting. The school district's development of Yupik language materials is credited with helping to keep the Yupik language alive. For many years, Yupik teachers from throughout the region would meet every summer to write and design new books for the children, and some of their early work was housed at the Ayoprin Library. And then it just hit me, oh no, all the materials we've been gathering from all the sites and collecting so we could preserve them are in that building, 
And that's when I broke down and started crying. Firefighters bulldozed a hallway to save the library, but no one's been able to go into the library and check on the conditions of the materials due to fears that they may be contaminated with asbestos. Well, things like the materials in the library, a reason that we'd like to take a look deeper into the history of the Ayoprin Leet Nachovic School in Bethel. When it started 20 years ago, it was truly on the frontiers of bilingual education as well as native language restoration. So joining us now to talk about this Agatha John Shields and Steve O'Brien both former principals of the school in fact Steve you were the very first and Agatha's daughter was one of the first students uh, currently Agatha is an assistant professor at UAA and Steve is retired from teaching well Agatha I want to start with you on this how did the fire affect you what went through your mind when you heard the school had burned down I was very devastated at first knowing how much we put into the school, like the language, the translations was, were the materials that I was mostly thinking about. But then it went from devastation to crying, angry, but right away it changed over to we can rebuild. We can work together and build this up again. I want to mention that, that your father, Paul John, was a respected elder in the region. And, and many people said that whenever he spoke, that you could hear the best Yupik ever, that he was so eloquent. What's the difference between someone like Paul John and, and Yupik speakers today? From my experience, even just to speak to my father, I would hesitate because I knew his level was way above in comparison to mine. I'd have to think a little harder and so his level in our Yuchtun language was pretty high, and he talks about how he listened to his grandparents speaking at home. So if, if we make a comparison to my level being more like the, the children's level, his level was like above college, you know, in comparison to how we were. So in today's society and the language that we speak is more of the basic Yuchtun language. So when you look at the Yupik language today, some people might say, oh, why bother? You know, it's kind of, it's not what it was. Why not let English rule? When I, I always refer back to what our dad told us. He always told us that our language was our power and our ability to do whatever we want by knowing our language and along with that culture. So we've always knew that, known that was important, but he also told us that we needed to get our education in order to be able to help our people through our language and our culture, to help people to be stronger and to be more stable. Well, Steve, you've worked with children, you know, aside from students in the normal classroom, as, you know, as a principal as well, uh, but you've worked with children that have had some real challenges in your career. Do you think that there's a connection between language loss and, and how a student does in school or how they deal with the world in general? Uh, there's a lot of research on that topic about how language erosion and cultural erosion lead to some of the problems in our schools today. Um, after uh, we had a shooting in Bethel, you know, a school shooting. A school shooting at Bethel High School back in 97. I was asked if I would consider taking on the role as the principal or the leader at, we weren't a charter school yet, at the immersion school. And I absolutely saw this as an avenue to prevent that sort of grief and loss in the future. Uh, there's a lot of evidence, especially from the Maori and the Hawaiian immersion programs, which are have been going on since the early 70s, that when you have a successful language immersion program in an indigenous language or any language, but especially in an indigenous language, that suicide rates go down, alcoholism rates go down, academic success increases. So as we engaged in this, it was a passion not only for the present and the academic achievement of the children currently enrolled, but we were looking to the future. And I always felt that you know, if we were successful 20 years down the road, our school would be a model. Well, it's interesting that you know, 20 years ago, even some of uh, the native leadership questioned whether uh, that this school could, could 
be successful because they, they would have trouble finding teachers who maybe had the UPIC skills, the language was er eroding, but to see the community of Bethel completely embrace a school, get the children back in, in a classroom, a temporary classroom, within a week is, it says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, there's no naysayers today. Everybody is supportive of the school and they see the obvious successes that it's had. And the things you say, you know, there, there's a reason for that. In the 50s and the 60s, teachers in the United States, BIA teachers, they used to preach the mantra of English only, English only. You want your child to get ahead, English only. But there was no educational research to support that premise. In fact, it's just the opposite. Children in immersion schools, whether if it's Yupik or Maori or Hawaiian or Spanish or Japanese, because we borrowed from the Anchorage School District too with their Spanish and Japanese programs, they're very successful. The children perform better academically in both English and in the target language. Well, you know, whenever you have a fire, you know, even though there is the best of intentions of continuing, you know, it, it, it is a challenge. What do you hope will happen, you know, hopefully when the school is in a new home? I believe that seeing how everybody has been coming together, I know they're going to come back stronger. And based on how, how we were brought up as Yupi people, our elders and our ancestors share with us our ancestors are watching us. And they also say, um, the other saying is they want us to work together. So having that as a, a quote or a saying passed down to us, we have to work together. And not only work together, we come back stronger and it also unifies us and we can do this through love and working together and floating together. Well, that's one thing that people emphasize, the parents, that they're finding at the school that they don't find elsewhere is this sense of love and community. And that goes with the Yuchtun values that we have were taught and we knew those would help us. I mean, those did help us, so we knew that would be something that we could pass down to the younger generation, which very much connects to the Yuyarak that they recite every day. Well, we're going to talk more about this. We'll carry our conversation on, on the website, uh, ktva.com, on the Frontier section. So thanks very much for joining us. You're welcome. When a fire takes away your uniforms, how do you compete in a wrestling match? Teamwork to help a group of wrestlers from Bethel compete. The Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium provides comprehensive health services for Alaska Native and American Indian people across our state. In addition to world-class care at the Alaska Native Medical Center, our work delivers health services for rural Alaska. From cutting edge technology for the best care possible to modern construction of clean water systems and health clinics to health training and outreach that honors our culture, our vision is that Alaska Native people are the healthiest people in the world. I just want cremation. Cremation specialists in Alaska. Can I have a service before cremation? Our staff is committed to serving your needs. I just want something basic. The simpler, the better. Specializing in simple cremations. Whatever your reasons are for choosing cremation, call Cremation Society of Alaska, 277-2777, or in the Valley, 373-8627, and on the web at alaskacremation.com. For a teen living on the streets, the world is a dark place. The candlelight vigil for homeless youth shines light into the darkness. It shows that, despite the cold, Alaskans are embers of warmth. One candle provides light. A sea of candles is a beacon of hope. Join us for the Candlelight Vigil for Homeless Youth on November 19th at the Anchorage Museum. Imagine living a life that is eroding around you. Every day, a few more inches. Every day. 
the possibility a storm could take with it the only way in and out of your community, and no money to get you to safety. It's the reality for 450 people living in the northwest village of Kivalina. What are we, cast out people? Who's going to help us? Emily Carlson in Kivalina, Life on the Edge. One of the things that we've seen in the aftermath of the Bethel School Fire, a lot of can-do spirit. Students at the Kuskokwim Learning Academy, a boarding school housed next to the Ayaprun Litnahavik School, lost everything. But as Dave Laval shows us, that didn't stop their wrestling team from competing in Anchorage. Brendan Evans showed off a new look when he hit the mat for a wrestling match at Anchorage Christian School. He wore the new uniform of Kuskokwim Learning Academy. Evans received it just a day earlier. Off your knees, Red. Meanwhile, Rhett Jackson faced his opponent in a newly bought uniform. He and many teammates had no choice. Their old uniforms are gone. Flames destroyed the academy November 3rd. It had been housed in the Kilbuck building along with a K through six UPIC immersion school. The fire destroyed everything, including the wrestling uniforms, but the building is not the only thing scarred. And I don't know what I was gonna do if we don't have school in KLA. We had no uniforms, we had no shoes, headgear, medical kits, we didn't have anything. ACS and other schools offered wrestling gear to the Mustangs so they could compete. Just one problem. We couldn't keep that stuff. We were gonna need stuff for this weekend, so we decided let's go shop, see if we can find stuff in town. An Anchorage sporting goods store offered the items at a major discount. It's Brendan Evans won his match, something he and others at his school needed after a devastating loss. Dave Laval, KTVA 11 Sports. Within days after the fire, there was a spaghetti feed and a fiddle dance to raise money for the Immersion School and the Learning Academy. The Bethel Community Services Foundation has stepped in to coordinate fundraising for fire relief, and you can donate by going to the foundation's website. Well, that will do it for this week's program. Thanks for being a part of this conversation. We'll see you next week as we tackle yet another frontier. Even though there's an empty seat, our son will always have a place at our table. Even though the holidays will never be the same, my sister will always have a place in our family. Even though life goes on, my mom will always have a place in my heart. For victims of drunk and drug driving, our grief is unique. But you are not alone. You always have a place at MAD. Call our 24-hour victim helpline at 877-MAD-HELP or visit MAD.org. Good morning, I'm Megan Mazurik. And I'm James Gaddis. Well, I came to Alaska to fulfill my dream of finally working on a morning show. It's the one thing I want to do. When I got here, it was just a, a man and his dog. Now I've got a few more priorities, 
a few more responsibilities. Life has changed for the best in ways that I that I never imagined. I knew this would be, you know, one of those trips, one of those life-changing ventures coming up here, but I didn't think it would be anything uh, as fulfilling as this. This is KTVA-TV Channel 11, Anchorage.